Hi everyone and welcome to this time-lapse version of my autumn stag in soft pastel. If you fancy seeing some longer tutorials from this piece, do check me out over on my Patreon channel. Also check out my other stag demo of just this stag's face here already on my YouTube channel. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe here on YouTube if you like my content. It helps me out greatly and also consider visiting me over on Patreon. Hope you enjoy this speedy version. So this piece is on pastel matte paper. It's the first time really that I've tried a very big scene like this. So I was interested to see if I could manage to build up the lovely depth of field that I love to create on the velour paper that I normally use. So this was a bit of an experiment and I've done some smaller pieces on the pastel mat over the last couple of years, uh, sort of just learning how to use it. And I'm approaching it pretty much the same way I do with the velour, starting from the background, starting to block things in, and looking for the darker tones mostly first, then starting to come in with my lighter colours. So it's a little bit different working on the pastel mat than velour for this effect, as you've really got to work hard to soften things, make it look blurry and out of focus. And you can blend beautifully on the pastel mat paper, but it takes a few layers of pastel on there first, and you can easily get to the point where it starts to turn into a bit of a muddy mess as well. So it's just being careful to not need too many layers. But also putting enough pastel down that everything starts to smudge around and move nicely. So I love creating this kind of background. And this piece in particular was a special request for a client. And it's based on an old myth a Celtic myth, a story about some of the most ancient creatures of the world. And in this painting, I've tried to include the stag, the raven and the salmon fish, three of the characters from that story. So you can obviously see where I've placed the stag. He's center stage. And I've decided to put the raven over to the left of the piece. Still quite prominent within the painting. And then the salmon fish was a bit of a bother because I uh, didn't necessarily want to include a river and go into seeing something underwater, which could have been quite cool. I did play with some ideas like that. But I decided to be a little bit more sneaky and hide the shape of the fish somewhere within my blurred background. So I wasn't 100% sure that that was going to work out, but I did experiment on Photoshop first played around with some ideas. Then at this stage I'm just trusting that it will work out and working my way methodically through the background. I tend to just focus on smaller areas at a time, sometimes when I'm working on a big background like this. It helps me to view the areas between prominent branches and really tackle that space for a while. Towards the end I'll start to add marks across a piece, more um, building up the colour harmony nicely, adding final marks. But at this stage I really try to break it down into bite size. It's quite a long process to get through a painting like this. So I'm always looking for ways to um, motivate myself a little bit uh, psychologically. Um, find ways to keep going through a long piece like this. And the bite size technique seems to work for me because I get little areas close to finished and I can start to really judge the rest of the painting off of those areas. So just filling in all the gaps in between the main branches of the tree. I've pretty much just blocked in the tree with my dark uh, bits of black but also some very dark unison values. But then of course I want to add some colour to the tree as well to find where some of the light's been reflected off the bark.
But really the only part of the painting that I want to be in crisp focus is the stag, the, the main character. So even this tree that looks quite in focus, I'm trying to keep everything reasonably loose, keep the edges of everything nice and soft, so that when the really crisp detail in my deer comes along, it should really make him pop out from all of this busyness in the background. So I do like to go quite busy with backgrounds sometimes. And I think the key in my work is to try and keep the background out of focus. Different degrees of out of focus as you get further away from the main subject. But that slight blur to the edges of everything really helps it not compete too heavily with the main subject. And that's something that I have a lot of help on on my Patreon channel as well as here on my YouTube channel. If you're trying to branch out into backgrounds, excuse the pun, um, there are lots of videos on my two channels showing you different types of backgrounds, how to create all sorts of different textures. I'm hoping to make some good leaves tutorials from this piece. We've got such a range of different leaves where they're completely out of focus. Uh, to some of the little crisp leaves that I add in over the top of the dark tree. So the potential for a few tutorials from this piece to come. But as I mentioned at the start, if you're interested in having a go at a stag, a red deer like this, you can work along with me in my paint along demo, which is already here on YouTube. It's a few hours long and you can see the exact colours that I'm using and work along with me to create your own stag. So I will probably try to focus some of my tutorials for Patreon from this piece, more on the background and also on the foreground which you'll see later on. So at this stage I have the rough outline of the salmon trying to hide it amongst the, the branches of the trees at the point where things are most out of focus up here, furthest away from us. So I can afford to let the edges go a little bit blurry. However, at the same time, I really did want it to look like a salmon fish, so I did work for a while to try and tweak the edges of the fish. You can have a look at how I did in the final preview at the end of the video. But now I'm so glad at this stage to get on to the deer finally. The background took me a long time. It took me about two thirds of the complete time on this piece. So I often do spend longer on a background than on the main subject. Main reason here is because I've painted a lot of stags. It's something that I'm really familiar with. And when I got to this point of the painting, I could kind of just turn on autopilot until I got the stag finished and was on to the leaves at the bottom. So this part of the painting, because I'd done a proprietary piece um, of the stag's head, figured out all my colors, this part really felt like uh, a lot easier to work on because I knew what I was doing. So I had great fun replicating this stag's head again as part of the bigger picture. Definitely a great idea which I recommend to go and do smaller studies if you're planning a bigger painting like this. I had a lot of the groundwork done with that small study, figuring out my whole palette uh, how I was going to work with the light that was in the photo reference for my stag. And I mixed and matched a few photo references here. I have lots of pictures of ravens. And my photographer friend, Robert Malone of Malone Photography, let me kindly use his uh, beautiful autumn scene of Lady Dixon's Park in Northern Ireland. And I've been wanting to do an autumn scene for a while and I've admired that photograph of his. So I cropped it, put areas of it out of focus, 
but really the palette of this piece comes from that background. You can see a lot of the dusky blues at the bottom of the scene, just between the trees. And it's all of those colours that are going into the coat of the deer. So I do like to mix and match photo reference sometimes. And one of the things that I'm always talking about in my tutorials is just how to do that and make the things seem like they were real together. Um, one of those things is the colour harmony, which I've been talking about here. So lots of tutorials on my channels all do about colour. And finally I make it to the bottom third of the painting. Still the legs of the deer to work, but I'm just building up the texture of the carpet of leaves all around first. This way it doesn't matter if I go over the edges of the legs a little bit. Then I can add the legs in on top of those background leaves. So the effect that I want to create here is those distant leaves closer to the trees, having those smaller, further away, slightly out of focus. Then the leaves around the base of the deer, having those a little bit more crisp, more in focus. And then right at the very bottom of the painting, just in our most foreground area, having again a little bit of blur there, just as if our camera lens is picking up some foreground blur. So three little main areas to create within the leaves. And just working each plane of field, attacking each one slightly differently. Try not to become too uniform with the shapes of the leaves. And leaves are something that I find particularly difficult, so I'm always trying to capture them as quickly as I can, but also as realistically as I can. So that's definitely something I will make a tutorial all about. So just jumping around the place a little bit, trying to keep my focus and not rush the leaves at the bottom. It's so easy to rush ahead when you get close to the finishing line. But this was a most enjoyable piece to work on and I learned a lot more about pastel mat. Feeling a lot more confident now to tackle some really big pieces on it. And I hope that you have enjoyed seeing this come together. Thanks very much for watching. Do subscribe here on YouTube if you haven't already. And also consider checking me out on Patreon for my full-length tutorials. Until next time, happy pastling.